When it comes to football, the world is divided between Adidas and Nike. Combined, they sponsor more than 60% of the teams in Qatar. But not that long ago, this map looked much different. In 1990, Adidas supplied more than 60% and Nike had none. Why does this even matter? Well, there is a lot of money at stake. The global sportswear market is worth 300 billion. And the World Cup is one of the world's biggest sporting events with a huge global audience. It showcases raw passion, athleticism and victory. Or in short, it is a massive marketing opportunity. That's why Nike and Adidas battle for the best teams, players and moments. They want to win when the world is watching. So while Argentina and France shine on the pitch, which brand is the biggest winner in Qatar? Welcome to Athletic Interest and the Battle of the Brands. The fact that we are even talking about this rivalry is remarkable. For a long time, Adidas owned football and Nike was almost non-existent. Because Adidas' roots are in football and Nike's are in running. Adidas started its rise with the World Cup in 54. Their founder, Adi Dassler, had invented screw-in studs on lightweight shoes that made Germany win the World Cup in the rain and Adidas a household name around the world. From then on, Adidas became synonymous with football. During the 70s, Adidas boss Horst Dassler even played a key role in commercializing FIFA. From creating a television market to arranging sponsorships and broadcasting rights. Its strong ties to football made Adidas the biggest sports brand in the world. And explain why the map looked like this at the beginning of the 90s. At that time, Nike knew nothing about football and football knew nothing about Nike. But at the 94 World Cup in the US, Nike co-founder Phil Knight saw the Brazilian national team take the title in front of a record-breaking crowd at the Rose Bowl Stadium. It made him think. After conquering running, tennis and basketball by signing the right athletes, to become a truly global brand, Nike had to get into football. And Knight had a plan. He told his employees that to understand football truly, they had to see the game through the eyes of Brazilians. And that's what they did. Two years later, a $200 million 10-year contract was signed in New York between the Brazilian Federation and Nike. Not only was the deal itself groundbreaking, but it was also the way that Nike activated the partnership. The Brazil national team killing time at the airport, the secret tournament, viral Ronaldinho's, Joga Bonito and robots taking over football. Nike truly left its mark on football culture. And it paid off. Nike's football sales went from 40 million in 94 to more than 2 billion in 2018. Also thanks to sponsoring the World Cup winning team in Russia. But what about 2022? Here's the breakdown. Every World Cup, the executives at the Adidas and Nike offices each open their Excel lists and start counting. How many teams are wearing our kit? How many players are wearing our shoes? And how many goals have they scored? Let's start with the first one, kit sponsorships. Each country has a massive built-in fan base, and success will lead to millions of shirt sales. 13 of the 32 countries are playing in shirts provided by Nike. The most by any sportswear sponsor in Qatar. Adidas outfit seven nations. It's only the third time Nike has outperformed Adidas and the biggest gap Nike has ever held over its longtime rival. Nike's success clearly comes at the expense of Adidas. And now even Puma is looking to reach up with Adidas. However, it's not just about quantity, but also quality. Between 2018 and 2019, Adidas lost nine sponsored federations, but only two came from the top 50 nations. This is a clear sign that Adidas changed their strategy to focus on having the best instead of the most. So let's look at quality. Who is sitting in the VIP seats in the Nike and Adidas portfolios? Six of the seven nations playing in Adidas are ranked among the world's top 20. Nike has seven teams in the top 20, but it is also tied to lower-ranked teams like Qatar and Saudi Arabia, who both rank among the worst teams competing this year. But having teams from the major markets of England, France and the US will most certainly guarantee a lot of shirt sales for Nike. Among the top four are two Nike teams and one Adidas. But the secret winner is Puma, who sponsor Morocco, a team that has won the support of large parts of the Arab and African world. It's nice to sell a lot of shirts, but there is even more money to make with shoes. Players can freely choose what shoes to wear, no matter the team's kit supplier. 
So Adidas and Nike sign individual deals with players. Those are becoming increasingly important in today's superstar economy. Players like Ronaldo and Messi have an unprecedented following on social media and with it a commercial power that exceeds many clubs and federations. As with shirts, it is again Nike with the largest share. Almost half of the players in Qatar are wearing Nike shoes, followed by Adidas with over a third. While Nike is still in the lead, they were much more dominant four years ago with over 60%, but dropped a lot of players since then. Because again, it's not about quantity. Having 70% of Ecuador won't sell a lot of shoes. But also on that end, Nike wins. Most of the goals were scored with Nike boots. The squads of the two finalists show a more balanced picture. The classic Adidas vs Nike situation. Before crowning the winner of the Battle of the Brands, here are two honorable mentions. First, New Balance. They only have 10 players in total, but they chose good ones, scoring lots of goals for big teams. And second, Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton practically won the World Cup before it even started. The iconic photo of Ronaldo and Messi playing chess made the internet go mad and became the second most liked post ever on Instagram. But the big brand winner on the pitch this year will be Nike. In 1990, they didn't even have one single team at the World Cup. In 2022, after almost a century of Adidas dominance, Nike has stolen their place. However, Nike's victory is not as big as it could have been. Adidas can thank Messi and Argentina, their most important ambassador once again delivered. But who will take his place? The eyes of the Nike and Adidas managers will already be on the future, trying to find the heroes of the 2026 World Cup. If you want us to make another Battle of the Brands video four years from now, make sure to subscribe to the channel and our newsletter. Thank you for watching.